No. Not at all, huh? No. It is the 15th of April, 2022. My name's Corey Winfield. My name's Justin Burke. And we're live as we prepare for, for the, the rally, U-Fam rally of the UFAM. Which we're like, what's UFAM? Well, that means Unite to Face Addiction Michigan. And they started it back in 1801. And they wanted to show then then the then Governor Schwetzenberger that people in recovery had a voice. So they would drive their horses and carriages and stuff to the Capitol. And at that time, it was in Detroit. And um, just show people what happens when you come together. That's nice. Yeah, that's all, all fake. Cause I, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just 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 winging it, man. Just making shit up again. Yeah, make yeah. Sometimes you got to do that. Make the story better. Mm. No, but no, they they did start it uh, a few years ago, and it, it was that it was to to show the politicians that yeah, people in recovery. We're out there and we vote. And I think it's kind of... I mean, it still has some of that feeling to it. But as they say, like, we're at the table now. Right. You know, but we just have to keep reminding them. So it's just a, a good way to, to show up, meet people in recovery, and have a good time. That's what it's all about. Connection. You know, for show. So yeah. technically, we're live on Facebook. Sweet. Technically. Technically. On which page? The 217 Recovery page. Sweet. Which just says 217 Recovery is now live. So I believe that's actually working this time. So thank nice. you. Hello, if you're, if you're watching. Uh, Justin and I, we're preparing for the rally because we're going to be at the rally May 19th in Lansing and we're going to be broadcasting live. That's right. Ooh. Yeah, which is cool. So I told them that, yeah, we could do that. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's like trying to like make it all come together and trying to figure out are we going to do Facebook Live or are we going to do YouTube can we do them both at the same time and we're also on Spreaker doing live which Spreaker is the website that we use to do our podcast uh, to publish it and then it sends it to everywhere like iHeart, Spotify, Pandora Apple um, all, all that stuff so Nice. And then we just have to figure out how to get live on our app as well. That probably costs more money. Well, it does if we went through, because the app that we use is made for churches. Mm. <laughs> 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 I'm a big fan of Jesus and all. But, so with that, it would it would cost a little extra. But we can have a link to it. Like if we're doing it like right now on Facebook, we can have a link to the the Facebook Live. But again... Just go to Facebook, right? Right. Why do I always have to over overcomplicate things, Justin? It's what we do. I, I'm really good at it, though. It's what our addict brains do in recovery. Yeah. We overthink everything. Yeah, so uh, speaking of recovery, though, your world has, has been going well. You had your 27 months last week, I think it was. Yep. In a row. Yeah, first time ever. Yeah. So it's like it's wow. new, new territory for you, you know? Yeah. But you're venturing off into new opportunities in, in your career. Yeah, actually I am. Um, into a career that I wanted to do when I was first going through treatment and everyone laughed at me when I told them what I wanted to do. Um, but a year and, what, eight months later, here I am actually doing what I wanted to do uh, being on probation only for since last October, too, you know, and being able to help incarcerated people, you know, be able to find treatment and services is a blessing. It's such a needed thing because we know as addicts that our addiction just, like, lays at bay because we can't get it while we're in there. So 
we know as soon as we step out those doors, it's right there all over again. And it's like this little safe haven spot when we're in there, but when we get out, it, the safe haven's gone and it's ramped right up, even worse than what it was when we were going in almost. And, you know, just helping those guys get into treatment, the ones that do actually want it, is amazing. Mm. I gotta say, in <coughs> with your, <coughs> <Excuse me. coughs> whether you're going to treatment for the first time, the 80th time, it, it's it's mental. It, it's how you prepare for it. Um, you're gonna get what you put in. But if you're in a place like, say, you go to a treatment place and there's ten people in there, including yourself, and eight of those people are 100 percent serious, and you know they're you're having good groups and, and everything's going well, the the chances for you to catch on and want to participate are, are really good. You know. If you flip it, you know, or if you take the same and eight people are full of shit and they don't even care and they're just there to do this and do that and you're outside smoking, they're talking about how they're going to be the biggest meth dealer in Battle Creek, you know, and you're like, whoa. <laughs> you know, you, for me, I, I would get frustrated and sometimes I wouldn't take it as serious myself. You know, I, I would kind of get sucked into that that attitude and that, that way of thinking, so... You know, the more you can be positive, the more you can be around good people, you know, especially coming out of jail. You know, when you're in jail and, and you got, I don't know, it depends who's in there. You know, it could be 50-50 split. It could be 80-20 of people who, who really want help. And, of course, not everybody's in there for the same thing. But, you know, the people that are, you know, you guys can talk about, man, like, this is this is getting old. You know, I don't want to go back to jail for this again. And, you know, you don't have many options at that point in there either, but you know someone like you to come in and be like, "Hey, look, here's here's some options for you, and, and we can help you get back on your feet." And just because you messed up, or just because you got caught, or whatever, just because you're in here because of this drug charge, doesn't mean that you're your piece life's of, over. Yeah, you're a piece of shit, and you just need to give up. No, <laughs> doesn't mean that at all. But if ninety percent of the people in there have that attitude of "F it, I'm just going to do this," and it can be hard for, for someone to even see any glimpse of hope. Right. I actually met a guy yesterday that when my brother was in jail and he uh, somehow he recognized my last name, I'm not for sure where or whatever. But anyways, they got brought up and he goes, do you got a brother and stuff down in Lake County? And I was like, yeah, you know, he just got out of jail. I'm like, so what's going on? You know, he's clean living the good life and he goes no he goes man i really wanted to tell you anyways when i was in jail that i was in your brother's cell and you know everyone down there congratulated you know him on how well you're doing and all the smart choices you're making in life and he goes in to actually finally meet you he goes it he goes it's kind of awesome he goes to watch someone struggle from addiction to hear people from your hometown talk about how bad you were to watch to see how good you're doing now he goes man he goes it's amazing and that's just remarkable to see how many people back home that I was using with said oh yeah he was a complete douche you know and then have nothing but good things to say you know now and realize that just because I made bad choices don't mean I didn't have a good heart because I took care of a lot of people when my brother was in jail, you know. I tried sending them money. Mm hmm. People uh, shouldn't stink in jail. <laughs> so, wait, you were showering them? No. I mean, I'll buy people bars of soap. Oh, okay. You know, it's just one of those things. Put it on their pillow. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Use that. No, in, <laughs> you've said on the podcast before, well, everybody, because you're, where, what's the city you're from? Baldwin. You know, everybody in Baldwin uses. Just about? I was like, no, everybody you know in Baldwin uses. You know, but that's the reality of your situation when, when you were in that situation at the time. When you lived in Baldwin, the people that you knew, everybody used. So right. you start thinking everybody uses. I used to think that everybody would just come home and just get drunk at night. I thought everybody did that. Cause that's what I did. Mm -hmm. You know, but in reality, not everybody does. And you never know who's watching. You know, and for, for people to, to tell your brother that you're doing a good job, you know, that seems like it would create little interest for him you know to 
get on the path and that he himself can live a good productive life and it doesn't have to always be oh I'm from Baldwin and people from Baldwin that's all we do yeah is use drugs and give people bars of soap in jail <laughs> but yeah you know I mean it's he's actually doing really good um, we just went to a concert a few days ago together and you know there was moments why as we're standing in the alley to go into the venue and because that's where the line was at down the long alleyway and I'm like oh this is great you know what are we going to see in this alleyway you know and next thing you know I mean here's alcohol bottles and next thing you know alcohol bottles being turned on their side I'm like oh and I just look at my brother and we just look at each other we're just like I, I said to him I'm like man I'm glad I'm going to be able to remember this concert afterwards mm -hmm compared to what we used to be like and he looked at me and goes you're right he goes that is a good feeling to have to actually be able to remember something that we're doing together and actually having an enjoyable great time to not be able to remember it like they are you know because they're numbing their face and well no because you have to have drugs to have a good time <laughs> That's what we thought at the yeah. time. It, it, it's almost impossible for me, you know, back when I was in active addiction, to do anything, especially a concert, man. Oh, man, that's that's a huge excuse, you know, to, oh, to go and... Oh, yeah, I'm going to a concert. Got to drink, got to do a little mm -hmm. line. You know, smoke a little weed. Yeah. You know, got to do whatever, you know, because it, it's got to be got to be fun, and that's the only way it can be fun. And obviously, you know, now that that's not the case, and, yeah, it's actually is mo better yeah it really if is. you do remember it and you are in your right mind and you know it's, it's way different and i don't well, i've been to concerts sober before but usually i leave because i have to have like vip backstage stuff otherwise i'm just not interested you know i'm thinking about getting vip for my next concert though you should i'm thinking about it reward yourself you know, you're not spending money on liquor or anything. Yeah, I know. I told this, uh, my girlfriend that it would make a wonderful gift for, like, Father's Day, because it's Father's Day weekend. I'm like, I already bought the tickets, so you could go ahead and buy us VIP passes. I think it's fair trade. Yeah. Yeah, the money that you're saving by not doing all the other stuff anyway. Yeah, you can afford that. And, you know, sometimes there's meet and greets, and you have to sometimes go through the artist's website, you know, to sign up for the fan club or... Oh, yeah. You know, different ways. But, yeah, you do a little meet and greet, and usually they're they're pretty generic of, I, you stand next to them, they take a picture, and you move on. But, whatever. It, it's it's better than just going yeah, to your seat and sitting there or standing there. So, yeah. yeah, enjoy that. So, some people, though, would think you're crazy. You going to concerts? Yeah. But aren't you in recovery? Yeah. So, what were some of the... I don't want to say struggles, but what were some of the uh, red flags that you possibly saw the first time you went to a concert sober? Like, were you like, man, if I get a whiff of that ganja rolling around? Well, I mean, hell, you get that everywhere now. But, I mean, did anything, like, worry you? Um, not really. I mean, I took a person that was in recovery to my first concert. He didn't have nearly as much clean time. Uh, my sponsor yelled at me for taking someone that only had five months of recovery underneath their belt. And I'm like, you know, we should all be able to have fun in recovery. I was like, I had enough clean time. I felt comfortable enough with my sobriety uh, to be able to do something like that. And to be able to watch someone else, you know. And we both enjoyed the concert we went to go see. But at the end of the day... You know, I put him in a risky situation by taking him early at being only five months because it was at the diesel lounge down in New Baltimore, is it? The one north of Detroit. I get him confused. New, Bof New Buffalo, New Baltimore. But anyways. Uh, Completely other side of the state. I know. It, it, they're on total opposite sides, but I get him confused. Anyways. So we go, we, we each had a good time, and people were drinking and smoking. I mean, I didn't see nothing crazy at that one, so that was really nice. 
But this last one I went to, like, downtown Detroit, like, that was the most wild concert that I've been to so far, like, I actually see people turn liquor bottles on their side to smash up their cocaine, to stand there and snort their cocaine in the alleyway and shit, like, yeah, I know I'm at a rock concert, but, like, you guys ain't even being discreet about it, like... It, it granted it was downtown Detroit, but still. Yeah, well, it wasn't in Baldwin. No, <laughs> you know, but it was. I mean, it was a little triggering, but I was just like, yeah, at least I'll remember the show afterwards. I Man, I see a couple fights break out, and I'm just like, yep. Now, so is there a concert like say Snoop Dogg? Would you go see Snoop Dogg? Or is that one that you'd be like, yeah, I don't know if that's a good idea. No, I'd go see Snoop Dogg. Would you? Yeah. You're secure enough in your yeah, recovery. Yeah, I'd go see Snoop Dogg. So my pass the joint to you, you'd be like... I wouldn't partake, I'd just pass it along. You wouldn't just throw it down on the ground? Nah. Like, damn devil, get out of here. You know, everyone's got their own thing, so... If I was at a Snoop Dogg concert, and somebody started passing around the weed, I'd grab it. And I'd eat it. You'd be wrecked. Beat up. For hours. For eating a joint. You, you're I, pro- I probably would wreck my mouth because it'd be hot. Maybe a little bit. It'd burn my mouth. But I'd be like, you don't, I'd be like, you don't read that. <laughs> <laughs> nah. No, nah, I wouldn't. I, I don't think I would go to a Snoop Dogg concert. Probably sucks. I don't know. I I think I'd go to it just to see what it was like. I don't know, because everything he raps and sings about, I'm not trying to live that life. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to drink gin and juice. No. I'm not trying to wear condoms because I'm married. I don't have to. That's nice. That's, that's, hold on, there's my button. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> but yeah, I, I personally, I don't think I would go to a Snoop Dogg concert, but... You know, there are concerts that you go to and, you know, that would trigger people, but you got to know yourself. You know what? I'm sure there's even a yellow balloon thing probably at a Snoop Dogg concert. Maybe. Yeah, you know. For people in recovery, you know, in case people don't know about it, there's this thing called the yellow balloon uh, thing where people in recovery get together, they take a yellow balloon filled with helium, and it's marked as a safe space space for that concert for people in recovery who struggle with addiction. So there could be a yellow balloon section there. Have you seen the yellow balloon section? Uh, No, I haven't because Mm -hmm. honestly I haven't been to a mainstream big enough artist yet. I like independent artists. So, you know, I I like them as they're coming up before their ticket sales get to like $200 a piece. You know, when okay. you're, like, 30. All right. So. Like, like, yeah, I wouldn't seen them before you guys even knew who they were. Oh, you know those, those hipsters. Yeah. Uh, is, is that what you call it, hipster? I don't know. I don't know. But, so, the, I've heard of the Yellow Balloon. I, I, I guess I haven't been to many concerts, so I, I haven't seen the Yellow Balloon, but... I guess that, you know, that's kind of a cool thing. And if you just want to meet other people in recovery, that, that's what I really like to do, uh, meet, meeting people in recovery. So if I went to a concert, I would look for it. And yeah. if they had it, I would, I would go in there and say what's up and hang out with some people. But And also I like small venues, though, too, like the Intersection. It's probably, like, one of my favorite venues. Grand Rapids. Yeah. Yeah, that's more intimate. Mm-hmm. But you have any, you've never been to a live comedy show, which... No, I haven't. There's a comedy event coming up in Traverse City tomorrow, and Marnie and I are going to go. We're going to go scope it out because we want to record uh, or make a movie. Yes. And I think it would be awesome if we did, because people in recovery, we're funny, most of us sometimes, at points in our lives, can tell a story that is relatable and kind of comical at the same time. So I think it would be great, you know, to to do like this stand up tour and then film that and my buddy Ron that's what he does is he, he makes movies and I think I would get Ron to like follow us on tour you know uh, to, to, to film it all but to just have a piece where we could throw it out there uh, to different 
people and organizations to say, hey, would you like to sponsor us? Like, hey, Red Bull, or hey, Monster, hey, insert energy drink name here. You know, people in recovery like your stuff, or, you know, coffee, or, or whatever, you know, somebody that would make sense. You know, and say, hey, would you like to sponsor? This is what we're doing, and these are the guys that are going out on the road. And, right. you know, just the behind-the-scenes stuff would be funny. You know, just going to a restaurant, you know, I think could be, be funny. And uh, um, being able to film that that piece just so we could, like, offer it up, say, hey, this is what we're about, this is what it's going to be about. I think that that would be a great way to go. So that's what we're going to do tomorrow. We're going to go scope out the place, check it out, and... There's a guy I know there that's in recovery that's going to be performing, and you think he's funny. Yeah, he's all right. I've had limited interaction with him, but I I, I like him as a dude. Yeah, he's a great guy. You know, so it would be interesting to see. Maybe he fits into our little tour. Yeah. Hey, more, more the merrier, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So that's, that's what we're doing tomorrow, and we went to the Jay Moore... Uh, show in Grand Rapids a few weeks ago and when I see people drunk off their ass like that it just reminds me of uh, I'm glad I'm not that guy anymore right it really does like I'm so glad I'm not that person because the comedy shows you think that you're the funny guy and so you want to start heckling almost and it's, it's not really heckling you just want to be the star and you're drunk and you're feeling good and haha and people tell you you're funny and so you want to like be loud and next thing you know you're obnoxious and you're that guy you know but being sober you look at it and you're like my god thank you lord that I'm not that guy <laughs> like literally that I'm not, not that, that guy right yeah so but anyway we're just doing a little test kind of with the the podcast today just to to see where things are at get prepared for the UFAM rally that's right that's on the 19th of May it'll be good and you know if, if you watched or listened thank you uh justin i appreciate it and a uh, happy good friday yeah happy tax day or is it the 18th I don't, i'm not for sure i don't oh, know i gotta figure it out because i gotta do mine yet i haven't done my taxes oh my yet. god justin you're gonna go to prison no, i owe the irs a bunch of money that's fine Oh yeah, that's cool. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Just, I, you know, just send just send me the bill. Yeah, I work for a living. I pay you taxes. You, you got, just keep my money. It's fine. It's perfectly normal. Uh, yeah. So, well, good luck with that today. Yeah. Or whenever. I'll figure it out one day. Get around to it. But yeah, well, I think this test worked out better than our last test and. We'll figure out the whole YouTube thing if we're going to go live on there and Facebook or whatever. But, yeah, May 19th, uh, if you need info about the UFAM rally, it's in Lansing. It's a Thursday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., all-day event. They want us to do broadcasts all day, so we're going to be out there. And uh, Tyrone's going to be with us. Marnie's going to be with us. Marnie's getting a posse of people together. They're going to be there with us. And we'll be talking to the people that are there because they're going to have speakers and stuff like that. Come and talk to the crowd, and we'll probably grab them as well and yeah. if you want to stop by our, our booth or tent whatever you want to call it you know come up say what's up and if you want to share your story you know live on the podcast that day hit me up beforehand and, and we'll set something up and I'll give you time where you can come by and and talk you know yeah. if you can't make it make sure you watch our live broadcast and you know listen to our listen to our stuff for sure same got a couple of people that's going to be attending down there so yeah. If you can't make it, hey, we're here for you. We'll be streaming the whole thing. The whole time. Hopefully. Lights blue. Is that good? That's good. Okay, cool. All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk later. Uh, thanks again for, for checking us out. And May 19th, look for us to go live from the UFAM rally.